In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a laminated book using the Mink Machine and the Cinch Machine. So if you're looking to learn how to make a book and bind it from scratch, this tutorial is for you. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carly and I love all things crafting, specifically cutting machine crafts, but I also love general crafting tutorials like this one. So if you love crafting too, check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your Christmas cards or holiday cards and bind them into a book. But if you're looking for a tutorial on how to use the cinch machine and make a book from scratch, this tutorial is for you. So we're going to take some old Christmas cards, laminate them, and I'll show you how to use the cinch machine. I won't flip through the cards because I don't want to show any families that don't want to be shown on YouTube, but these are all just holiday cards that I've stacked together and put into a book. My cards on top and then I have a cover and a back and I've done that for both years so that each year I can pull out my different holiday card books and flip through all of the old photos. And I just think it's really fun, a really fun way to preserve your memories. So I've started my book for 2023 and I'm going to show you what I do from start to finish so that you get this cute little album. So if you are looking to create a book, you can use your cards and just punch them directly. But I didn't like the idea of punching into the actual card. So I came up with this idea to add a little strip of paper. I cut these on my Cricut machine and they are a half inch wide by seven inches tall. So they fit the five by seven cards really nicely. And I just taped onto the edge. So I'll show you what I do. So I flip it over. These are fake families, by the way, since I told you I didn't want to show you any of my friends. I just printed these off of Canva. So these are stock imagery and not real people. Well, real people, models, <laughs> stock images. So we're going to flip them over and then we are going to tape these black strips onto the edge. So that way when we punch them, we're not punching into the picture. I'm using some super clear tape and you don't have to be perfect. I mean, I hear that a lot of people just throw their holiday cards away. So don't fuss too much with your tape. This is pretty clear tape. So I just tape it right in the center and push it on and tape it on. So I just put one piece of tape and then they're good to go. We're going to use a laminator to protect the cards. If you don't want to use a laminator and you just want to punch your cards, you can do that too. But I like the idea of laminating. So I'm going to use my mink. You can use a traditional laminator as well. I'm going to power it on to setting three and let that heat up. For my pouches, I have these thermal laminating pouches from Scotch. They're five mil thick and they're eight and a half by 11 inches. I will link these in the video description so you can see these are my favorite lamination pouches because they are so thick. So I'll take one pouch open it up and I'm just going to place my cards right into the pouch up against the seam. And then I'll place the other one right next to it. Two five by seven cards with the extra binding can fit in these. So they are a great size to do two at a time. My mink machine is ready. You can see that it's green. So I'm just going to run this through. Again, you can use a regular laminator. You don't need any type of protective sheet with these pouches. So you just run them directly into your mink or your laminator. Once your cards are done laminating, you can just trim them down to size using a paper tr trimmer or some scissors. I like a paper trimmer because you can just easily line it up and get a perfectly straight edge. So I'll just trim these down and then we're ready to punch some holes on them. On the back, you can see that the tape isn't super visible. So if there are photos on the back or a sentiment, I do try to be mindful of that. But since the back is blank on this, I didn't really care, but you can see that it holds it on really well and then there's nothing on the front. My cards are ready to be punched so we're going to use the cinch for that and this is a really neat binding machine. I'm going to show you kind of the basics of how to use it so there's a little strap that keeps it shut so we can just pop that off and it will open up. And on the machine it's really informative. There's a lot of information and I was a little bit overwhelmed by the information. So I'm going to walk you through what I wish somebody would have told me. So to punch the real way to do this, I have a sample right here. This is just a piece of 
five by seven card stock. So I just have a little sample so you can see I've already punched it on one side. I'm going to punch the other side to show you the correct way to punch. So there is this pop out that slides out. We're going to push it all the way to the right side and then we're going to slide our piece of paper against the edge of the guide right on this side. I'm not sure if you can see that with the handle, but there's this guide right here and we're going to slide our paper against that and then slide it into the machine until you hit the wall. All of these should be pushed in. So all of these buttons, pegs should be pushed in. So those are all pushed in. You're gonna slide your paper into the machine and then with one hand hold it in place and the other hand you're going to pull down the lever. When it comes back up, you have something that looks like this. We're not done yet, we're still missing some holes over here. So what you do is you pull this all the way out. You're going to place your paper against it. And then on the left-hand side, I might have to change my cam camera angle because it's kind of hard to see. And you place this peg guide alignment down into your hole. So this is gonna hold your paper in place and then on the base of the machine, it tells you if your paper is seven inches long, which is what ours is for this example, then you pull out peg two. So I'm going to pull that peg out and then I'm going to press it down again. You can remove the peg and then I have all of my holes punched. So that is the traditional way. I will show you with a larger piece of paper too so you can just see how that works. So for the larger paper, we'll push it all the way back in. Make sure all the pegs are pushed in. Punch our first go. So line it up against the edge. Push the lever down. And this is an 11 inch piece of paper. So we're gonna pull it all the way out again. For an 11 inch piece of paper, you're going to pull out peg 10. So we're gonna place our paper in, slide it back in, push down the alignment peg, and then press again. So by pulling out this peg, it's preventing me from getting like a half punch at the top of the paper. So I can pull this out and we're good to go. So you can do more than one sheet of paper at a time, but I just wanted to show you that's how the punching works. Now you saw that I punched and I only added one additional punch to my five by seven. So for my holiday cards, I determined that that was a lot of effort and I was okay with just having one less hole. So what we're going to do instead in this tutorial is we're going to punch at the center. So there's a center line here. So what I did is I folded a five by seven piece of cardstock right in half. I know that the middle is three and a half inches and I held it right to where the center is. And then I just moved my guide to the point where my line matched the center line. And most of my cards were the same size so I could punch at that same place. But I'll show you what I do step-by-step step so that if your cards are a different size, you can determine where your center is. The easiest way to mark your center is with a center ruler. I couldn't find my centering ruler, so I found a t-shirt aligner, and you can just hold it to where they are even, so it should be three and a half and three and a half, and then you could mark it with a piece of tape or indicate the center, and then again, you'll just wanna make sure that you line that center up with your center mark. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I line up my center, you also can see that the machine is equal. So if you're just eyeballing it, you can kind of eyeball where the center of your card is. Since I'm not going for perfection here, I just use the same guide for all of my cards and I was happy with that. So I just rested them against here. You can see that it's projecting out just a bit and I had my red tape marked so that I could remember where I had that. So again, all of my pegs are pushed in and I'm just going to punch my card while holding it.
I think going slow is better and I go one by one for these laminated thick cards. So I'm not punching multiples on these. So again, I'm missing one hole, but I'm okay with that because it saved me so much time with having so many cards. For my albums, I like everything to be center aligned. If you wanna align everything at the same bottom hole, you can just keep on punching on this end. So now that you have all of your cards punched and you're comfortable, like I said, I didn't go through and add that extra punch, so I am missing a punch on these, but I'm okay with that because it saves so much time. To assemble my book, I have these gold bindings that are from Heidi Swap as well. I think they're really cute. You can find them on Amazon. These are three quarter inch. Might be a little small with how many cards I have this year, but we're gonna try them. Before I bind it, I'm just going to place one of my cards on and we're going to cut off the excess. So I'm just going to put that on. I'm just going to cut through that. There we go. So on the side of the machine, there are these little hooks and you're going to place your coil, your binding onto that. To assemble your book, you're going to add all the pages first, then your front cover, and then your back cover. That way we can hide the binding inside. So I have all my cards ready to go on to it and I have my front cover. So I just kind of assemble my book just like I want it minus the back cover. So I'm going to start placing those on, trying to be mindful of the family's names and photos. You can see that this card is smaller, but I wanted to line it up in the center. So I decided to punch it on center and then I'm just not hooking it on the first or the last one and I'm hooking it right on the center. All right, I got all my cards on barely. So this is my card. This is the front of my book. And then I have my cover. My cover I made a little bit larger than the card. So most of my cards are five by seven. So I made my cover, I think five and a half by seven and a half. I'll put the dimensions in the description. And then I just added some gold foil to the cover using my heat transfer vinyl technique, which I just made a video on. So I can link to that too, and then laminated it and punched it. Next, after the front cover, we're going to put the back cover on. So that's a little bit confusing, but we want to hide the coil back inside. So we're gonna put the front cover, then the back cover. If I had an image on the back, I would want the image that's going to face out to be touching. So the cover, the front cover and the back cover should have their pretty sides touching each other. Once you have your whole book onto the coils, you're going to carefully lift that off and kind of just spin it to keep everything on there. We're gonna take that and we're going to spin our cinch machine to the back. And on the top there are some measurements. You'll wanna spin it to the size of your coil. I told you I'm using three quarter inch coil for this, but I do a little bit smaller than my coil size. So I have mine adjusted to in between the five eighths and the three quarter, and you can just push that down and then you can adjust it. So I'm, you can see that there's a bunch of adjustments in between. I have it kind of halfway in there. Okay, so next you're going to place your coil. So my book kind of looks like this right now, it's open. I'm going to push it in against my machine. You're going to want to keep your fingers out of this area. So move your fingers out of that area. Using the same lever, you're going to push down all the way. So here's a look at the coil all cinched together. It's magical. And then when I take the back cover and flip that around, it hides that cinch so that my book is complete. I should have done probably a little bit bigger coil because you can see that my book doesn't close all the way because I have so many cards. So I probably should have done a one inch binding for how many cards I had this year, but that's okay. And then you can see that I can open it and all my cards are in there and my album is done for the year. If you have any questions about this tutorial or you need links to any of the supplies, everything will be linked in the video description. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.